seven, seven women will take hold to our profits. They will take hold to one man. And the reason I say that is because when you look at what's going on in the world today and how our, our men, the Israelite man, has been destroyed totally, completely, been gunned down, lynched, hung, thrown in prison, taken away from their families. Um, so many things have happened to the Israelite men that there we have so few men. Even though I know the Most High going to restore them, we have, we have lost a lot of our men to this world. So when that scripture right there says seven women will take hold to one man, that's just saying that those men that we still have that are walking in the truth, that will prophesy to us, of course, women are going to grab a hold to them and they're going to listen to what the things that they say because they know that these men are walking in truth. So because we don't have like a lot of our black men walking in the truth, or our Israelite men walking in the truth, and then the ones that are not in prison, that are not, um, uh, have not been killed and taken out of the household, most of them are homosexuals or they're gay. So that leaves us with very few men. So when that scripture says seven women will take hold, they will take hold, but that doesn't mean that they're going to marry, they're going to be their wives. Grab a hold to them in the truth. These guys, these prophets are going to be telling them the truth. So, uh, so I'm going to use some examples like um, Big Judah. Big Judah has a channel and a lot of the women listen to his channel. So that, that means all of those women have taken hold of Big Judah because he's telling them the truth. So that's simply what that verse means. It doesn't mean that they're going to make, they got the, you got, you, the, the most high said that these men can have all of these wives. See, wickedness, man. Wickedness going on out here in Israel. That's saying that we are going to grab hold of men that are in the truth, that are going to prophesy, that's going to be telling, telling us these things of, of, of the Most High. Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushua, by Hashem Kakurash. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father who to wear in because God, his name in Hebrew means he exists. And Yahweh's size name is the only begotten son. Who to wear in because Jesus Christ, and his name in the Hebrew means he is delivered by assembly of the name, Rekak with us the Holy Spirit. I'm going to give honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who do well. Peace and blessing unto the shark and that she push forward in the truth that the four corners of the earth. I want to say shalom to you, brother, to keep pushing. And though it's shalom, but today's life test look like the other nation is shook. Watch them. I want to say shalom to you, brothers and sisters, as well. My name is The Wire from Jimmy Slime, St. Louis Camp. And I'll come back at another video. And there's going to be a response to Elder uh, Karathazat out there in uh, Baltimore, you know, Holy Bible Defenders. Okay. And. I'm going to just tell it Isaiah 4 and 1 will happen on this side. Isaiah 4 and 1 will happen on this side. Okay. So let's go and hop right into it. So this is the book of Isaiah chapter 4 verse 1. And it reads. And in that day seven women shall take hold of one man saying we will eat our own bread. And wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Right. So kind of, so yeah, seven just means a number of completion. Okay, yeah, saying we would eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Why? Because the man is supposed to be the provider, right? But this woman right here, she she hasn't accepted the fact that a man can have more than one wife. So she tries to basically lie on the most high and interpret it the way how she wants to interpret it because it hurts her feelings. That a man can have more than one wife because she's effeminate. Well, I ain't gonna say effeminate. She's a fem a feminist, okay? As uh, Coach Greg Adams would say, uh, a feminazi. <laughs> you see, you women out there, you are gonna realize that you can't bring that feminist shit in the uh, truth because the Lord is not 
He does not pander to women. Okay, you women are the weaker vessel, and that's the order. Okay, and it's not to put you down, but it's just to put you in your place. Because this society bigs you women up and tell you that you can do whatever a man can and you can do bad all by yourself. But, hey, some of y'all are doing bad all by yourself. You know, you're in the car crying and talking about somebody you want a man and it's hard and all this other bullshit. Okay. And yeah, y'all starting to feel it. And you women are, uh, are lonely than never. And it's all because of your mindset because you want to try to control the Israelite man. I call you women that want to control the Israelite man, the penis police, because that's exactly what you are. You know, you want to stop the Israelite man from, um, you know, from his nature. Everybody else can fulfill their nature. And, you know, you it's OK for you women to be whores and hot from man to man. No consequences or no, no accountability. And have abortions, you know, take a plan B, get on birth control. Or and if you do decide to keep the baby, you can put the man on child support. You know, you got many, many, many options to destroy yourself and destroy the, the nuclear family. And that's what Esau, even the so-called white man, done, uh, done allow you women to do, you know. And and who takes that philosophy to the next level? The so-called black woman. Okay, she takes that to the next level because uh, Esau Edom them poison her mind. You know, with this whole feminist like they like that shit just dest- that feminist shit destroyed a whole damn nation, man. I mean, just literally, this this country just functioning chaos. But hey, it's about to get ready and fall. And call law, allow him like how about me? I shut this country about to get ready to fall, man. Cause the sooner this country falls, the faster we are in our kingdom. Okay. It says, I'm gonna read it again. Isaiah 4 and 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying we would eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by the name to take away our reproach, right? So when you are called by somebody's name, when a woman is called by a man's name, that means he married her. Okay, so what is this woman talking about? Okay, this woman, she's just in denial. Because her, cause her uh, husband can have more than one man. If she even have a husband, you know. If she do got a husband, shit. She completely out of order. You know, going on social media and, and saying that this ain't what that's talking about. Like, and wait, clearly it is. Okay. So, yeah, this shit is crazy. But, hey. It is what it is because uh, you and me you're gonna have to learn the hard way. A lot of you. This is First Timothy two and eleven. Let the woman learn in silence without subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to assert authority over the man, but to be in silence. And what is this woman doing? Okay, is this woman learning in silence? Hell no. Nah. She getting that black ass on, on her uh, phone and making videos talking about some yeah. That's that that ain't what that's talking about. You know. The nerve of you damn women. The nerve of you women, man. Like, damn. Like, all you women need to just shut the fuck up. Like, god damn. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Right? For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Right? And that's how you women are going to be saved in childbearing. All right? Childbearing. Zechariah 13. I mean, damn. Like, is being a sister wife that damn bad? Like, oh my. So this is the book of Zechariah, chapter 13, and verse 8. And then shall come to pass, and in all the land, save the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein. I'll bring the third part through the fire, and we'll find them as silver is refined, and we'll try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say it is my people, and they shall say the Lord is my power. Right, so you have two parts. Okay, so you have two-thirds of the nation of Israel is going to be cut off and die. 
They are destined for destruction. They were born in vain. And the majority of that number is who? You women. Because you women outnumber us, meaning a man can naturally have more than one wife. It's that simple. Okay. Right, so let's get a example of a wicked woman running her damn mouth. I like all you women do. You just blab, blab off of your mouth. You just can't keep your mouth shut, man. I mean, you just itching. You know, you itching to open your mouth. You ip, you itching to open your that quiver of yours. Because this woman is, this woman quick to open up her legs. All right, 2 Samuel 6 and 12. And it was told King David saying, The Lord had blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertained unto him because of the ark of Yahweh. So David went and brought up the ark of Yahweh from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they that bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was girded with the linen ephod. Right? So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of a trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, my call, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. Right? So she was talking shit. Like, man, like, look at this nigga out here hopping and leaping and jumping and acting a fool, right? And she was a Benjamite. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in his place. Place. In the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And as soon as David had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he dealt among all the people, even the whole multitude of Israel, as well as, uh, as well to the women as men, to everyone a cake of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flag and a wine. So all the people departed everyone to his house. Then David returned to bless his household, and Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants. As one of the vain fellows, Samuel still uncovered himself. Right? So she, the bitch couldn't even wait till he got in the house. As soon as she saw him coming in, so she had to be waiting by the damn door. Like it's like as soon as she, like as soon as he come in, I'm 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 finna, I'm finna let him know what what I saw, right? And David said unto my car, it was before the Lord who chose me before thy father, and before all his house, to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. All right, so yeah, he checked her. It was it was before the Lord, who chose me before your damn daddy, bitch. Yeah, because your, your damn daddy uh, couldn't even obey your howl by Shmiel Shah. The nigga was, he was too busy uh, rebelling against the Lord and and uh, seeking witches and talking to the dead. All right. The hell? Verse 22. And I will yet be more vile than thus and would be based in my own sight and of all the maid servants which thou hast spoken of of them shall I be had in honor right so they gonna get it but you not gonna get it therefore my call the daughter of Saul had no child until the day of her death right and yeah good for her man a woman like that don't deserve children you know like the woman the real vain woman who think they know every damn thing and yeah like they 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 they, they, they so smart and all that, they usually be the most single ones, okay? They always have a body count from here to Italy, but they never have no children or no husband, okay? Yeah, running their mouth. Ecclesiastes 25 and 23. A wicked woman debated the courage, make it the heavy countenance and a wounded heart. A wicked woman 
A woman that would not comfort her husband in distress, make it weak hands and feeble knees, right? So yeah, she a, a wicked woman debated the courage. Make it the heavy countenance and a wounded heart, right? So she'll say something to you that'll stick to you for the rest of your life. You know, it's, it's the same thing as a man putting his hands on you, you know? Like men fight and uh, go to war. She she go to war with her mouth, you know, in like a spiritual way. And a, a spiritual way is way more intense than the physical, you know? Because shit, you can die, you know? Because like many men done chose life for crime or in the streets and bums doing whatever is sodomized because of their damn mother, Okay? Yeah, making a heavy countenance and a wounded heart, right? So a wounded mind. Because she insecure, so she want to make you feel insecure too. You know? You think a wicked woman like that is going to make it to the kingdom of heaven? Hell nah. Now, a wicked bitch like that going to the lake of fire. All right? Or she, hopefully she gets sex traffic first. Because that's what's going to happen to a lot of you women, man. In the near future, getting sex trafficked. Since, uh, since, you know, since it's your body, your choice, it ain't gonna be no choice in that day, man. And we can't wait, because, man, you people are proud, man. Especially you women. You people are proud. You think you think you got everything figured out. And you don't know shit. All right? The Lord is about to, um, he, he about to humble a lot of you people, man. And you people, you need it. This is second address 15 and 18. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The house shall be destroyed. And man shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods. Because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. All right, so you all that. So kind, kind. That's what's gonna happen in these last days, man. Kind, kind, kind. So I'm gonna end it off with that. I wanna say call hello. Allow him like how about me on shy. Bashme Kakura, Shalom, and a Baba Ball. To St. Kevin Samuel's famous quote, die alone, die alone. Black women, would you rather get together or would you rather die alone? He ain't lying. So I keep seeing a lot of men say that, you know, women are going to end up having to share their husband or share their man. I even see some women saying this as well. And I beg to differ. That's, that's a lie. That's bull****. I don't have to share no man. I'm not sharing no man. I don't even like sharing my food. So what I look like sharing my man, I'm not doing it. So listen, if that's something you believe for yourself, sis, or bro, then that's something you believe for you. Don't project that out into the world and tell other people they're going to have to settle and deal with it and, and share a man. That's not true because I'm not sharing no man. I'm not doing it. Oh, what's the matter? You got some sand in your vagina? <laughs> <laughs>